Hey, welcome everybody. In the last video, I talked about how I got my first programming job with very little experience. And I gotta tell you what, I messed up. I messed up big time. You know, at this new job, I was learning a lot and the boss knew I was learning, but I was still given some big boy responsibilities that I, w I was just not ready for. Before I tell you my horror stories though, you have to check out our sponsor who makes this content possible. C++ Builder is the IDE of choice for rapidly building C++ applications. Utilize drag and drop visual components that are responsive and allow for cross-platform deployments. When building data-driven applications, you can bind data sources to visual components to make working with data easy. Go ahead and get started with a free trial of the Architect Edition, which will give you all of the features of C++ Builder. So whether you're a beginner just getting started or want to build enterprise level applications, C++ Builder is the tool for you. I'll leave a link in the description. So I was given the responsibility to manage the website and work on a new website. Simple enough, right? I worked on this for a while and when it finally came down to launching the new website, I basically wanted to get everything in one spot, right? We had hosting from some sketch company, we had a domain registered somewhere, and I wanted to get this all on one hosting provider, DreamHost. So not only did I move the hosting to this new company, I also moved the domain. I wanted everything to be charged from one service. So I didn't just update the name servers. Now this is something I've never done before at this point, and I didn't really understand how it worked either, which is probably the first problem. Maybe I should have tried it some on some of my own, uh, just try it out and make some of my own websites. But you know, that would have taken way too much time. So you know, I was just gonna go in and figure it out. Long story short, I move everything over to DreamHost. It works. I'm happy. I, nothing seems broken. I go on with my day and I don't hear anything from anybody. So I'm just assuming it's working. What I didn't realize is that I actually made a really dumb mistake. I didn't understand anything about DNS settings at the time. You know, I figured if I just had my domain, calebcurry.com, for example, and it pointed to the website, then everything's done. But there's actually DNS records associated with that that can do some other things. So for example, any kind of subdomains are defined in your DNS settings. You can basically say course.calebcurry.com points to this IP address, and that would be a an A record. There's also NS records, which are the name servers I briefly talked about a second ago. This is where the hosting of your website is. So you can have your domain registered at GoDaddy and you can set the domain's name servers to point to DreamHost, for example. And there's also MX records, which make email work for that domain. So if you want custom email, caleb at calebcurry.com, then you're going to have some MX records set up in the DNS settings. Now, I still don't understand all this stuff as much as I should. I usually just get it working and then don't touch it ever. But in the process of moving that domain, I managed to um, ignore all of these other records. What ended up happening is everything in the company stopped working, like pretty much literally everything. Customers used a specific subdomain to access their security equipment. They couldn't access that anymore. So next logical step, reach out via email. Well, that was broken too, right? So it took a few hours, but eventually my phone rang from someone else in the company saying basically WTF, what did you do? Um, you know, something's broken. Our first assumption is that you did it. And this is a security company, right? So nobody can access their security equipment, which like protects their property and stuff. So I'm freaking out. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know even how to fix it. <laughs> so eventually working with this other employee, I was able to restore all those records and get everything working again. So I didn't get fired. Nobody died, so it wasn't that bad. I didn't drop any production databases. Everything I did was fixable. However, this made me wonder, hmm, what are some of like the worst horror stories or dumb things people have done as a developer? You know, I could have caused a data breach, and in that situation, that's something that can actually cause a company to shut down. So that would have been really bad. So just researching this, I found this pretty hilarious article. What's the biggest programming mistakes you've ever made? And literally the first one just caught me because I did some database content on this channel. Update users set password to this. 
And the problem with this statement is he didn't specify a where clause, so it just updated the password for every single person in the entire database. This person suggested this I am a dummy switch. So basically you have to uh, be a little bit more strict when you're trying to do something. So that's pretty funny. Looks like this person for some reason commented out the where clause and just deleted all the customers. Seems to be most of these issues are something with dropping production data. So take, take a lesson from this anytime you are dropping a database or deleting data or updating data. You just gotta be like 100, 100% sure you're actually doing what you think you're doing. All right, this one is actually hilarious because this reminds me of a story from high school. My second for pay programming job was writing a computer-based matching software for Valentine's Day for a rival high school. Basically eHarmony for teenagers in 1983. I gave them the software, a manual, and they spent hours entering all the data. I got a frantic call from them the day they ran the printouts. It was matching without making gender any more important than other common factors. So all the football players were getting matched with each other and it was freaking them out. So we had something similar in my high school actually. And with this, we got a report saying who we were matched with, but we also had the strongest matches. So it would say, oh, John likes Amy and they're a hundred percent match. And then people kind of laughed about it and joked around for the next few days. But we figured out that, you know, this is purely based off of how many answers you answered exactly the same. So me and my friend put our name as uh, Chuck Norris and Oprah Winfrey, and then we answered the questions exactly the same. So for everybody who got this paper back, it said the top match was Chuck Norris and Oprah Winfrey. So that was just a fun story. But that's all I got. This video is totally random, but I wanted to come out with a video today and I had absolutely no idea what to do it on. So I need some video ideas, drop them in the comment section below. And please tell me your horror story. I just want to know what is the dumbest thing you've ever done at your job, specifically coding related. All right, let's just keep it coding related. Thank you.